It's a technology that's really begun to capture the popular imagination this year. 3D printing, where you take a digital blueprint and print out, well, just about anything. So where better than a 3D print shop to talk about what's been hot and what's not in the world of technology this year? And two top technology pundits to help me, Belinda Palmer and Stuart Miles. Off we go, guys. So wearable technology, one of the big themes of the year. Uh, Stuart, run us through what our lady here is wearing. So we've got some smartwatches here. We've got Galaxy Gear, the Pebble, the Sony smartwatch. We've got some fitness bands, so the Fuel Band, the Misfit Shine. And we've got some other devices here, which is the Fitbit, etc. Then we've got the Autographer, which takes photos on the go. And then top of the head, we've got Google Glass. And Belinda, what's exciting about wearable tech for you? I'm really excited about wearable technology because it's technology that adapts to our lives. It fits in with how we want to live our lives. Sometimes it may look a bit crazy, but actually a lot of the technology you see here is really adding value to consumers' lives. You say it looks crazy? This is what's crazy about this? OK, Glass. Take a picture. It's a really nice picture too. In the gaming world, we've got two brand new consoles, uh, Sony's PS4, Microsoft's Xbox One, battling for the living room. Stuart, if I can just stop you playing for one moment, which of these two is going to win? I think it's really interesting because they're both offering very different perceptions to the living room. So one is all about games, that's Sony, but Xbox is trying to be more of an entertainment hub for your lounge. But Linda, do we really want a console as the way we control our telly? I don't think we do. I think the battle for the living room is really heating up. Everyone's vying for the same space, including including something like this from Google, which is incredibly cheap, which you plug into your, smart, uh, your TV and it turns it into a smart TV. The problem is a lot of these companies are forgetting who tends to control the living room, which is women. Now, it's been another year where we've seen the rise of the mobile device, the decline uh, of the PC. Belinda, what are you going to pick out from this table? Well, looking at this table and the amount of Android devices, this is the year that Android finally got its act together. I'm particularly interested in Tesco now making technology. The Huddle is cheap, it's affordable, and ultimately you can buy it when you're buying your purse and your vegetables. So this is an interesting thing to watch. And Stuart, what are you going to pluck from the table? I think it's really been about the year of the phablets. There are phone come tablet, gigantic sort of devices that don't really sit in either. You know, Samsung Galaxy Note sold 10 million this year already. You've got Sony and lots of other people coming in. It's also been, oh look at this, this is beautiful, isn't it? It's also been the year that BlackBerry has sort of faltered, and I think we're really starting to see this is a device of the yesteryears now. While the Windows phone, which uh, here you've got the Nokia, uh, 1020 is coming up. It's starting to gain traction. The apps are slowly starting to come through and I think this has potential for 2014. Belinda, looking back on the year as a whole, what's been most exciting and what's been the biggest dud for you personally? Well, wearable technology, I think my smartwatch, my Pebble smartwatch is brilliant, it's sleek, it's beautiful and it adds something to my life. So for me, the smartwatch has been my biggest hit of 2013. Um, biggest dud, I would say, 3D TV has finally left the showroom. Thank God. The ridiculous glasses, no 3D content. I am so happy to see that go. <laughs> <laughs> so, Stuart, pick out your highlight and your, your raspberry of the year. I think one that didn't seem to gain as much traction as perhaps hoped was Facebook Home. They sort of launched, they said they were never going to do a phone, and then all of a sudden they teamed up with HTC to launch a phone, and then nobody seemed to be that interested anyway. And not many people have picked up the app that is available for all phones either. I think this year from a success point of view it has really been about wearables. I know it's a horrible word that people like to coin but the idea of fuel bands of watches and things like that. And I think we're starting to see where that's going on into the future rather than the products that are available now being the right products. But I think 2014, 2015 you'll start to see stuff that really excites us. So that's your prediction we're going to be in a more wearable future? I think so. I think it's all about this internet of things or internet of everything where everything's connecting to each other, talking to each each other, you're getting displays being cast, you know, content from your main device, your phone being cast onto TV screens, watches, glasses, you know, cars, headsets, everything else. Now we've got Raspberry Pi running in the background. Uh, that excites you, doesn't it? This ultra cheap computer. Great, because it's a great way to actually teach kids to code. There's nothing mystic mystical about coding, and Raspberry Pi makes technology much more accessible and fun. 
Stuart, we've got these 3D printed phone stands on the table. Do you take this technology seriously? Is it going to take off? We're in a 3D print shop, of course. I think it's very, very early still to, to become the main consumer of things. You're not going to see these in Tesco's anytime soon. I think it's one of those things that it will eventually, by the end of next year, start to make sense. But at the moment, they're still very much a sort of early adopter gadget.